Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Bizarre Briefing. This is the November 2019 edition. Brent wow. Studio. Joined as always with Brent Hughes. Hi, that's me. David Rowan. Right here in the middle. John Ryle. Hi. Uh, this is our behind the scenes podcast about all the great stuff we do here. Some of your favorite YouTube videos, podcasts, uh, stores, um, physical properties that people love hearing the updates on, social media. Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. I yeah, like how you say my name. It, 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 I feel like I've never heard you say it, and so I, I... I don't say it the right way, I'm assuming. Oh, really? Because it's Spanish, but I always say it John oh, Rail, right. like train rail. Oh, and right, And that's right. clearly not how it's supposed to be said. <laughs> right, I say it Rail like, yeah, like, like Israel. That. Almost. Yeah. 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 Rail. 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 <laughs> so thank you for joining us. How's everybody doing? We're, we're in December now. We're oh, now yeah. in oh, December. True. Um, still The warm. leaves are falling. Yep, they are. <laughs> That's the thing about December. <laughs> Normally it would be earlier than that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, the weather's really nice. Like, I think we're going to try to get another Scam Nation shoot uh, this weekend. See, climate change has... <laughs> oh, boy. Benefits. Here we go. Well, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Don't get David started again. Uh, so thank you, everybody. How's the... Uh, been a good, like been a good month? I've ever before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started here. Actually, David, we do, we do want to start with you. We're doing this on, we're recording this December 3rd. Mm. The, uh, I mean, technically the Cyber Monday sale is still going. We've extended it. Oh, really? Yeah. What? I know. We're probably going to extend it uh, for at least another week. Wow. wow. That's incredible. It's a long Friday. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We started even, well, we kind of started. You so guys this started year, on Tuesday. This year was weird because uh-huh. we launched the new product, which is the next item in the, in the list. Sure, sure, sure. Um, on Monday, and then we kind of un- flipped over the site to the Black Friday prices at that point. Mm-mm. And uh, to be honest, this Black Friday was fairly mild compared to years past. Oh. So we're just extending it while we have, you know, supplies. We're selling out of some things. So, mm. you know, there's there's things you can't get now. What do you mean mild? But, well, uh, it's just, I think we're not quite... So for the year, if you look at the numbers for the year, we're fine. Mm -hmm. But there's often a concentration of spending on Black Friday and and Cyber Monday. So there's like two little spikes that you see in the in the year. And those were just sort of like attenuated as though they had been put through an audio compressor. Oh, Anyone? Okay. Okay. now see if you did that though, you would yeah. see a higher baseline of the rest of the year. Yes, potentially. exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, do you do, do you think that there's a, uh, any particular reasoning behind that? I know we, we put a lot of racist jokes in our emails this year. <laughs> okay, so and, and, and you would think that would offset just yeah. with America. No, I think oh. it's I think it's um, you know actually I haven't looked at what the entire country did. This might have been. You know, retail wise, uh, not a record breaking year for everyone across yeah. the board. But also, I think there's a there's a significant amount of um, customers that we have that when we tell them about a new product, they just order it by themselves by itself just mm. to get it really quickly. Yeah. And they don't even if those sites already flipped over to Black Friday, they don't necessarily like go put other things in their shopping cart and take advantage of that. And then if you hit them a, two or three days later with an email that says, "Hey, the whole site's on sale." In their head, they're like, "Yeah, I was just there. I, I just, just bought there something." And I didn't, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. So we might have, we might have shot ourselves a little bit in the foot with with uh, releasing the whiskey bullets so close to Black Friday, but uh, the whiskey bullets have been a, a home run by themselves. Oh, good. So let, let's talk about the whiskey bullets then, because um, we this is not our first time offering whiskey bullets. No, we offered. I noticed that there was a lot of reviews already there. Well, so the product page, we kept the reviews for the whiskey bullets that were there before. The main, the main difference with these is that they're branded Modern Rogue, right? Right. Other than that, the other ones were food grade stainless steel. These are stainless steel as well. There's really not too much of a difference. Oh, wow! Look in at those images. Design. Yeah. Good job, John. I like. <laughs> Thank I you. really like the one that's, that's falling through the, right? the water. That took. Yeah. Per- Fucking effort. Yeah, that, that that's a that's a winner right there. Yeah, and but everybody just like we ordered, um, we had to double our order. Yeah, wow. within about two days of 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 uh, launching the product, and then about three days after that, we had to increase that doubling by fifty percent. Wow. So um, that's why they're 
shipping later than than today. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this has been a surprise for me because we ordered whiskey bullets in the past. Mm-hmm. We figured that everybody who wanted you know whiskey rocks in the form of bullets would have had them by now, and so we're just kind of like we're going to offer them with the modern rogue on the side. And but I think I think the last time we had I don't know if we had had whiskey bullets in stock how long it was between when we had the previous whiskey bullets and having those modern rogue branded ones, but there, the audience may just be a completely different. Yeah. So we've, the email list, we've kind of grown by a third this mm-hmm. year, which is a, a pretty good thing. And so that entire third wouldn't have seen the earlier emails about the product launch and might've been coming in after the previous ones were out of stock. That but, particular company just went out of business. Oh, they, wow. made, they made those. Um, so, yeah, we had an opportunity, and we thought it, it made, makes sense to do a, a modern Rogue branded product at this point, and, um, you know, launched it with a great video on, on the Modern Rogue channel. That took off, you oh, know. thank you. And, uh, yes, yes, we owe this entire success <laughs> of the Whiskey Bullets to John, Juan Rael. But, <laughs> but if Black Friday and, and Cyber Monday don't do well, we're all fired. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's the... Uh, that's why it's the last bizarre briefing. <laughs> oh yeah, we should we should have said that up top. Um, so that that's interesting because I don't think that we've ever been in this position of launching a product on or earlier enough from Black Friday where people didn't recognize that there were Black Friday deals on the rest of the site. I yep. think that's an interesting. Yeah, we usually try to buffer it by at least two, if not three or four weeks between right. a product release and Black Friday to have that buffer. Yeah, because I know earlier we, when we were talking, I mean, I guess a few months ago, the roadmap, and I'm not tied into the to the scam, any scam stuff conversations at all, but it looked like it was going to be Black Diamond uh, and early enough so that there was plenty of time for that refractory period and then Black Friday so people don't feel like we're hitting them up with two things. One so together. it's sort of like, there was an opportunity here for what Brian perceived to be a home run. He was right with the whiskey bullets. Uh, the other way to do it would have been to wait. And then you have sort of a similar problem where people just spent money on black Friday and then they won't order the new product until like the next time around that there's like a, a big promotion. Mm-hmm. So it was like, if we, if we hadn't launched it just before black Friday and we launched it, let's say like this weekend or the weekend after, we probably would have done maybe a little bit better on Black Friday, but we probably would have not sold as many of the whiskey, of the bullets. whiskey bullets. And I'm not sure, actually, you know, that, I, that and I don't know because I, wash I, out. I think when we launched Whiskey Bullets, and this is getting back to a little bit what I was talking about with audience, is that I think when we launched it, it we were just doing Scam Squad. I don't even know if we were doing Modern Rogue or maybe Modern Rogue was still very early. Mm. And so as Modern Rogue has grown and grown and grown and grown, there are a whole new set of eyes that we've just never, you know, had anything about that. And then with the whiskey bullet video being, you know, a lot of content in terms of like the unboxing stuff with the whiskey tribe guys. Um, yeah, I think, I think the timing, even if the timing was different, I think the whiskey bullet still would have done good. The other thing too, is you got to think that like black Friday is kind of some like a, it's like a fiat currency of, of holidays. Like everyone's just buying into the story, right? Mm. There's really nothing that says that a store can't do exactly what they do on Black Friday in February. Sure. In yeah. March, I mean, we've done if, that. Right, and we've done that like last spring, right? Or yeah. uh, 2018 spring. Um, and so I think if we have a Black Friday like that's a little bit mild, like we've had this year, mm-hmm. maybe, and I'm just, I'm not, this isn't set in stone, sure, but sure, maybe sure. in the spring, you know, a similar kind of week shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think, because I know. It, it, this would not be a change in trend from the past few years, but uh, we we certainly don't have as many releases as we did like w- uh, however many years ago when it was John Tilton here and there were like 50 new releases a year. Yeah, he had that one a week thing he was going for. Yeah. Um, I think at the beginning of the year I said 19 products in 2019. I did a count. There's actually some stuff that we're, we're holding back on. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so... If that's included, then we actually do get to uh, over 19. Oh, okay, um, good. But I'm including also like, both variants of our mystery boxes as, as sure. products. Well, and then and then there's been, you know, uh, again, like for, for, for me where I'm just over here on this side, you know, we've done less videos about the products too. So that's some true. of that stuff does, doesn't even register for me. That's but true. I'm sure, like I know that the emails have done well for 
like the magic effects that we've resold and yeah we've had a i think we've had a lot of s small things that we've tried this year um mm -hmm. as opposed to last year where we had kind of like four or five like really big spikes in the year mm -hmm. uh and then it was kind of quiet in between those but those spikes were really great and this year it was again it kind of the compressor analogy actually does make sense if you're familiar with it the spikes are just lower and the time in between is actually a little bit up, better but yeah um and then if you look at the year um, including the fundraiser that we did uh, versus last year, which also had its own fundraiser, uh, this is a better year. If mm -hmm. you take out that fundraiser, then 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 things change a bit. Okay. So uh, one last thing on the store. Uh, do you have anything you can tease for us? I know uh, you mentioned yeah. holding off some stuff. Yeah. So there is there are two things that we hope to be able to launch in the month of December. Another one of them will be in December. Yeah, another wow. one of them will be a another Modern Rogue branded product that I'm super excited about because I really like it and I use it already. And we kind of take Modern Rogue branded hair bleach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now this is just I've just been under a lot of stress recently. Uh, okay. Yeah. He saw a lot of ghosts yeah. recently. <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah. Um, that one we're waiting on packaging for, and then we'll be good. They actually just made the packaging, but they didn't make it correctly, so it's uh -huh. going to probably be delayed a little bit. But uh, And then the, the second thing is a, a, a Scam Stuff original, which Ooh. always which always is fun, mm -hmm. that has been in development for like a year, and okay. it's just Ooh. required a lot of, of tweaking along the way. Now I'm trying to rack my, rap, rack my mind and wrap my mind around if I know what this might be. So, one, so the Scam Stuff product will be something that's actually, um, uh, you'll need to get refills. Actually, both products, here's the, here's the hint, both products take refills. Scam stuff Pez dispensers. Yes. <laughs> Little Brian's head. We're trying to ixnay on the Espe dispenser day. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And so uh, you think both of those will launch in December? Uh, we're hoping. Um, one, I mean, there's... There's again a kind of a strategy where if it goes past like the third week, do you really want to do anything where right. people just know it's not going to arrive? And for some reason, even if they want it, the idea that it's not going to arrive might cause some hesitation. So it might just make sense to do it as like a happy new year. Here's a new thing. Yeah. And then the third thing is an entire line of products. Oh, wow. 10 products in an entire new line. Oh my goodness. Um, wow. That, uh, and I'm I'll, I'll say no more about that. Okay. But yeah, oh. that's, that might be January, February. Yeah. For those. It's a, the bartender too. Still 10 things. It's, it's funny that you say that. Oh, <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, uh, there is, there is a, a bartending product in the line. Oh, okay. Uh, open by you suggest maybe a modern rogue branded printer ink. Yeah. That would, would be that very be? lucrative. I throw that question to Brant. What would modern rogue printer ink be? Um, it would probably be like, you know, uh, uh, you can get inks for fountain pens that have like uh, different kinds of sheens to them and stuff. Mm. It would probably probably have some element of that. Although you got to be careful uh -huh. that could, that can jam up your machinery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe like invisible ink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like pre-made, you know, the lemon stuff. Mm -hmm. Or uh, modern rogue fax machine. Okay. Yeah. That? All right. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, just like put a sticker, a modern rogue sticker on those like hydrophobic, um, sprays. Mm -hmm. And so you have a hy hydrophobic, phobic ink and, okay. and, and then you sell people cardboard so they can cut out their own stencils and make their own hydrophobic graffiti. Sure. I remember that was when, when we were, I rem, I very vividly remember a night where we were all coming up with ideas for modern rogue stuff, like way before we filmed anything for the show. And I remember that was my favorite idea. Hmm. Hydrophobic like, graffiti? Yeah, hydrophobic graffiti. And so you spray stuff and it's invisible until it rains. And then whatever design you have doesn't get wet. That's, That's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll remind Jason about that because I think <laughs> we have the space to do it now. We have the technology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, very cool. So one last thing, David, while I've got you here. Um, people who watch Scam Nation uh, may have recently seen your face again. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, you were great. You were on uh, this most recent episode, the uh, one invisible move uh, trick. This is um, uh, Diamond Jim teaching the turnover pass uh, for the first time on the channel. I don't. Uh, Brian Brian even mentioned in the video that um, he's never taught the turnover pass because it is it's a little complicated and it, it's something that requires a lot of like expert not expertise experience. Yeah. doing to make it look right. I mean, I even, when I was editing this, 
because I do the re I do the recaps a lot of the times at the end of the episodes with like steps on how to do it. And, and usually I don't have like any written material to go off of. So I, I it, it's, it's always this like exploratory thing of like, Hey, wow, what do I do? Like what point should you do what? Um, and it, it really is like kind of finicky and it's tough to do in slow motion. I mean, we teach it in slow motion, but the, the big trick is doing it at speed and fooling people and fooling yourself. But even, even slow motion when you do it and there's some part of your brain where it's like, I know what I just did, but you see the aces on the ends there. Mm. Um, I don't know. Do, do you have, ex I know you have some magic. Do you have any experience with the, a yeah, the turnover, turnover pass? pass is actually a great first pass to, um, learn mm -hmm. because the classic pass is actually quite difficult to do deceptively. It's kind of a, uh, a, a, a badge of experience and, and, uh, technical prowess to go around a magic convention and show everyone your perfect classic pass because it's just so hard to, to pull off. But a turnover pass, you've got a lot more cover cause you're dealing with, um, sort of a, a, a turnover motion in addition to, uh, swapping the halves of the deck. Whereas the classic pass, there is no turnover motion and you just have to somehow take the bottom half of the deck and put it on the top without anyone knowing. Mm. Um, Brian's little jib pass that he did uh, looks great on this on this particular episode too. Yeah, that was uh, one of the pickup shots we have near the end where he's describing some of the other passes. Yeah, um, and it was interesting. I I um, I think this is like a weird sort of paradigm thing because I know when I was editing it and I was looking over the different we you know we had him film we filmed him doing a couple of these different sort of advanced passes at speed mm. and it's. It's that and the, um, was it the hurricane change that he can do? Yeah, those, we did with the color change. Yeah, video, yeah. Those are the ones that always fool me because it's so compact, all of the motions that happen. But when I was editing it, I could kind of see like, oh, the pack is, you can see the pack coming back in like this mm -hmm. one frame right here. Um, and it made me think, oh, well, he's not going to like that. But he like is that mentioned it explicitly as, as like how proud he was that he got it. Yeah, I mean, so I would say a high-level idea here is that all magic moves kind of have a weakness. And you, if you know what you're looking for, you will probably see that, that, that um, telltale sign. But doing it well um, doesn't get rid of that, but it just kind of minimizes it. And so I think he was just happy that it, that it came out as well as it did. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you look at that video, I want to guess how many times I've worn that shirt before that day, <laughs> just based on the bag wrinkles. Oh that are goodness. Still yeah. You can shirt. definitely see the one right on your, right in the middle of your chest. Oh, and on the shoulders too. Yeah. Oh my. Straight out of the, uh, I mean, that's the it. style of kids are going. For that's what, I think I'm just yeah. starting a trend is what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, that's they, right. They You're they a real hype stickers beast. on their hats and they leave yeah. the, the folds in their shirts. Yep. That's right. Oh my goodness! How uh, how was it getting fooled? So that's true. That's a hundred percent genuine reaction. Like I, he. So right when I made that face is where it's starting to dawn on me. I think there's a, a, a deception in, in what's being said, and versus what I as the spectator would expect. Right. As is the result, and then I kind of put it in. Like Brian called me out on it too. He's like, "Yep, it's too late. You already, you, you, you know." <laughs> yeah. Because I, because I, I had a dilemma at that point. I was like, I am the, the spectator, you know, watching this, but I do think I might have an idea. And I was like, do I say what I'm thinking right now? And yeah. and then, and then uh, Brian called it. But yeah, up to that point, I was like, what? No, the my the card. I just named a card, mm -hmm. and it's going to be between the two. And races. you didn't do anything. Yeah. And we we had there's a really great um, shot here later on from the the wide angle. Where you can see as you can see Diamond Jim do the move as you and Brian both look uh, look exactly away. He does it at the exact right time, right? So here at about three minutes thirteen seconds, they're looking at at uh, Jim's face, right? Uh, and then like even Brian looks over to see your face, David, yeah. while I'm, he's pulling. I'm off daydreaming the at this point, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I added a couple of you know diet cokes. <laughs> Yeah, at that point, Asperger will do that. Too. Yeah. Some other stuff, some mm -hmm. little 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 glasses of Coke. Uh, all right, well, uh, I know David, you have to go I and do. go yeah. do a, uh, well, a thing. So we're going to take a really quick break, and we'll come back with more of the bizarre briefing. All right, we're back. Thank you again to David for joining us. Yeah, on the uh, episode. So, guys, 
Uh, let's get into some of uh, some of the video stuff. Well, before we move on from whiskey bullets, I want to show that cool, sexy opening. Uh, we, the, we, which one? I, I the, don't know. Oh, the bullet dropping through the water in the video, the oh, whiskey oh, bullet video. Okay, uh, audio yeah. listeners, uh, uh, just uh, yeah, imagine. John, you'll have to describe it for the audience. <laughs> yes, and I'm going. Yeah, that's oh, not yes. a joke. You do have to describe. Oh, this. Yeah, this it's is an a audio podcast. podcast. Uh, I filled up a giant tank of water. And I shot for a good like three to four hours, constantly walking because it was out in the warehouse, constantly walking the card all the way back to my editing bay and seeing if I had caught the look that I wanted to catch. And I finally caught it at, at like hour three. Yeah. And it's just a sexy bullet with the Modern Rogue logo slowly dropping through the water, which for the record, bullets drop very, very fast through water. They do. They're so, uh, very dense. So it was a it was a tough catch. Yeah, I. It looks like you did pull it off. So yeah. uh, I can tell. So you did shoot this in slow motion, right? I shot it in slow motion, but I also added like an extra fifty percent slow slowdown on it. Yeah, you. Yeah, uh, but it does look good. It, it looks really good. You did a good job on that. Thank you. Yeah, that one. That was a beast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of modern rogue stuff, we just had a few, uh, guests in town, Brant. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the, the, uh, the, the company that they work doing, doing security ops, sec ops and stuff with. Do you, do you Red remember? Team Alliance? Red, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, uh, Deviant think, and, and Babak, yeah. uh, from, uh, from Red Team Alliance, uh, we're here and, uh, uh, filmed, how many videos did we film? Like four, five, six? Five, probably. I could actually tell you real quick. Okay. Uh, and it was it was about a bunch of cybersecurity stuff. So five, I'm getting I'm getting word that is not five. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, uh, you know, keyless entry, uh, 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 how to spoof, how to grab RFID chips. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Mag stripe stuff. How to write and read and write mag stripes. Yeah, um, and then the the finale of the of the shoot was uh, Jason getting an an NFC like a combo NFC tag installed in his uh, in his hand right above right near like the the meaty portion of your yeah, thumb is. which he did not mind mm. at all. Yeah, yeah, he seemed he seems like legitimately like into it. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, say I'm saying it didn't hurt him at all. Like it, it was oh, like yeah. oh. The, yeah, that's and it. it it healed up very quickly for him. You yeah. know, I, I saw him a few days later, and you could feel it in there. Um, and I'm sure there's still some sensitivity and still some like looseness where you don't want to move it around too much, otherwise right. it'll like open up the area that it can walk and can travel in. Uh, but uh, it seems pretty cool. I think <laughs> so. He has an older iPhone, and for the iPhones. Um, you know, they got NFC chips at some point and then they only opened up the NFC readers on those phones, like with the like the tens and the ten S's. Hmm. And his is like a six or a seven yeah, he's got model a six. one. Um so I think even even after it was installed, he couldn't really take advantage of it of like scanning it. Um but I, I think he I think he's looking into getting a new phone. But hmm. um I, he can't even modify it, I think, because he doesn't have the, he couldn't read it with his phone, oh. and that's how mm-hmm. Brian Brian programmed it with the YouTube thing. Uh, how how do you guys feel about that shoot? That was kind of two uh, two long days. Why were those days so long? Um, the the second day was long only because we we ate afterwards. Otherwise, it was a pretty short day. The first day was long just because it took a long time to set up and then and it was on tuesday that's right yeah that first day it was on tuesday so we do the night attack we're recording this on tuesday we do night attack uh me and brian and and uh our co-host just justin do night attack tuesday evenings and that shoot started at like 10 a.m mm. um because they were only in town for like a day and a half or, or Bobic was only in town for a day and a half or so right um and so it was uh, that was a, a really long day because um, then afterwards, you know, I, J- Brian and I come and do this show, which is like just talking online for like three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I came in Wednesday and just could not speak. I was right. just it, just gone. Like it, it came back over time. But like for a few days there, I would wake up and it would be very it, my throat would need time to like get like back up to like 100%. Yeah, you and Brian. Mm-hmm. 
what? Oh, I didn't. Re- I didn't realize Brian. Was yeah, he was. Sense. He was doing the same thing. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, but otherwise, I think they went really, really smoothly. You know. Yeah. Um, they seem to do a lot of like. They all work worked. ahead of time. Like yeah. Everything we set out to do functioned. Yeah, they did a lot of tests. I think th- I think that was part of it. Is it took a lot of time to set up and for them to do tests of it. Mm-hmm. But then that meant when we shot, it shot relatively quickly. Yeah. You know. Um, so, do, is there an estimate on on when those might come out? Do you, it, it just. Um, so I think we're going to start, um, putting them out, um, sort of later this month Mm. and then more of them will come out next month. Uh, I kind of wanted to, right now we have this weird thing with our inventory where all of it is just security stuff. Oh, really? So we, we just finished a ton of lockpicking lawyer videos Mm. and then we have three forced entry videos for like getting into a car and, and then we have five of these security videos with Deviant and Bobak. And then we only have like three other videos that are not security related. Oh, crazy. Yeah. So huh. I'm, I'm kind of trying to spread them out as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and I know um, we, we may not be because December is always weird because there's travel and, and booking stuff. And, and so I, I, I know it feels like the past couple of months, We've just had a ton of shoots, mm-hmm. um, uh, and so it's uh, uh, it's it's a shame that uh, we're we're kind of homogenized a little bit in that uh, what what we have left in the tank. Yeah, do we have a shoot coming up this weekend? No, or we're gonna try to do a scamnation shoot this weekend. Okay, mm-hmm. um, I think I think I think there's one or maybe two shoot days that are on the calendar still. But I know like Jason, cause Jason's been like, like redlined on, you know, prepping these episodes. Um, and so I think he wanted to take some time and like n- not get burnt out, um, and, and relax a little bit in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that's that. Uh, I don't even remember this other shoot. You guys uh, can someone remind me? Uh, this is, the know. ring-in shoot. That's funny because I asked Brant that exact same question and and Brian also told me about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we shot them wrestling on the floor. Do you remember that? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this yeah. was another with um, uh, Anthony from the HEMA, the Austin yep. HEMA. Austin Historical Weapons Guild. Uh, that's right. And uh, a, a f- he, he was from out of town. He, right, yeah. The, the, Kyle. The guest. Kyle. I don't know his last name, but yeah, he he teaches Ringin stuff in Oklahoma. And Ringin is is Ringin is a take off of wrestling, right? It's yeah. a type of wrestling. It's like 16th century uh, German wrestling, Mm-mm. something like that. Yeah, that was uh, that that was cool. So like uh, they're in a new space. The historic mm-hmm. Weapons, weapons guild is. Um, it's like kind of their own space. Cause the place that they were at before, which was really nice was also like, they were sharing that space with a CrossFit, mm-hmm. um, uh, studio. And so you, you kind of bump up against schedule. I'm assuming you like bump up against scheduling and, you know, facilities and stuff like that. Yeah. Like one time, do you remember, I think it was when we were doing the sword cutting video, uh, we were filming the video and then all of a sudden like a school bus full of kids shows up and they all had to walk behind us. I do remember. Uh-huh. I vaguely remember that. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes just like <laughs> weird things like that happen. Yeah. Um, and so they have their own new big space. The space is big. Um, and on that same day, wasn't there another film crew doing their thing? Like, weren't they college kids or something? Y- yeah. So they're kind of in what looks like an industrial park or a sort of a, of a business park mm-hmm. where they are now. Uh, and yeah, just it just happened to be that there was a car parked like right by the entrance to their place. And it was like, uh, it definitely looked like some UT, you know, students. College like, kids have really nice fucking film equipment. Well, because because they can just rent it. Yeah, the like, university can buy it. Yeah, uh, but they were like, there was definitely they were definitely filming. I think it was like um, a dance studio had just opened up. Hmm. I that would be my guess because I saw signs for it. I think they were filming something with a the fl- a flamingo dance studio. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that w- that was good. Uh, was was there anything particularly different? 
Um, oh, so it shoot? was a little weird in that our wide shot, uh, which you Bryce operated. Oh um, yeah, we did it, have a wide shot. Yeah, it was it was not it was it was a center shot. It was not a wide shot because mm-hmm. all of our wide lenses were on my camera and John's camera on the sides. Um, and then you kind of took a telephoto in the center just to sort of roam around and try to get what you can get. That's right. I, and that, I, 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 am sure you probably haven't looked at the footage yet, but I felt good about that. Cause I think we originally weren't even just, we were just going to say no to that right. third camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I felt good about the stuff that I got in that. And, um, uh, that's kind of how, uh, we, we've, we did those few scam nation shoots where instead mm-hmm. of having a master camera, we did uh, a detail camera. In fact, we did that one last time when we did a scam nation shoot last uh, last month mm-hmm. at uh, at Moon Tower. One one of those because it was all talking and stuff. So right. uh, instead of having a, a master shot, I was walking around with um, with a with a detail camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully that stuff comes out good. The, the martial arts yeah. stuff, um, it's it's always interesting because you have to like catch the form and catch all the right, the specific notes that they're mentioning and make sure Mm -hmm. that you're getting, you know, what they're doing right. And maybe what they're not doing right so that it's illustrative. Wait, isn't that Friday's video? Yes. Oh, so you've seen all the footage. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've started looking through it. Um, yeah, those, those types of martial arts videos are are really tough. The thing that I, I find works best is when the, the side cameras are as wide as possible and you move as much as possible as mm-hmm. a camera operator. Um, because you just need to like, it gives you more flexibility to cut. Yeah. And give you a sense of the space. And it, it was weird cause you, you were mentioning how, how their new space is pretty big, but we actually ended up shooting in a really small room off to the side of the big open space. Right. Cause because that was, was all that was mats. padded. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it was, it was this weird, like claustrophobic little scenario, but I, I think it'll end up being okay. Although I will say, mm. If we ever want to make a strong case about why we need new audio equipment, look at the first pass edit for this because it is oh. static all the way through. Spoilers, Spoilers basically. We, get, we got another. So, uh, we have another um, mic pack coming in the mail. Okay, well, what's the one thing at a time? So uh, that that okay. So that's interesting to know because uh, so I was manning that third camera and we had Annalise who uh, is is helping out with different production and, and pre production stuff. Uh, had her running audio um, mm-hmm. for it, and I know like she's still kind of getting her feet with it. Um, yeah, that's that's super tough because like that's the most like uh, high contact types of videos where they're throwing mm-hmm. each other around and their mic packs are getting lo- are going loose and falling all over the place. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that one of our lav mics that the guys were using uh, is broken because of that. Um, mm. uh, because of that shoot, uh, we, some of our, yeah, some of our receiver and transmitter pairs are finicky to say the least. I know some of our cords, just some of our cabling, we have bad cables. Um, so, uh, it, it would be good to see, to, to look into replacing some of that stuff. Cause, cause those receiver packs are probably 10 years old at least. And mm-hmm. they've been thrown around, all, you know, all, all over the place. Um, so, John, talk talk a little bit just briefly about the the well, new pack in the mail. Well, as you say, like uh, at least one of our packs is just gone as far as I'm concerned. Like I've tried using it several times and I just always end up using my own pack. Mm-hmm. But uh, I <clears throat> this morning, in fact, I talked Brian into getting us a road link which is like the hundred dollar less answer to Sennheiser. Mm-hmm. It's you know is it's that, still like is that the digital one. Um, yes, I believe it's digital. Yeah. Okay. So this is yeah this is a a, a digital filmmaking um, uh, audio kit and uh, it's 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 interesting kind of how they sell it because so it doesn't use RF it uses some sort of encoded digital signal so when you turn it on you sync them together. They find mm. each other. Um, and supposedly it's got good range. Supposedly it, it automatically finds the right channels to, um, to make sure that there's not interference. Um, I know the, the, I, I, I agree that we need new mic packs and the thing, 
the so I know I've been a little hesitant about going whole hog on these road links is because um, part of it is I went on a bunch of sites and was looking at reviews and and like definitely a bunch of the reviews are just people doing the taking this thing and like plugging it into their camera and and the camera receiver is bad or, you know there's no good um, yeah if you're like capturing sound with the, the DSLRs, DSLRs like we're not even talking to you. Uh, but there's no way to like filter that out or ideally this should be something for that. And so like seeing some issues like that, seeing, I guess they've been making these for a little while. And so you see some manufacturing stuff. So I, you know, hopefully when that comes in, yeah, and and, it's just and one it unit paces, and like, let's just try it out. Sure. Um, because that would be great. You know, we, um, we do need new mic packs. Yeah, because I've been running there. audio a lot lately, like the whiskey thing and like tomorrow shoot, like, mm. uh, of like, the, or the ads when you guys shoot ads. Yeah, like uh, there's been a few shoots where it's like literally just like John, you're comfortable running everything all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Sure, Brian, and we just go out and do it, and it's wacky and fun. <laughs> yeah, man. We uh, when when we were doing scam school. Because we were doing stand-ups until the end there, the intro and outro, um, uh, you know, sections of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- Brian and I would do the same thing: is yeah. work out like fun. We we would go a lot to the Rusty Mule right up the street, uh, which uh, since we stopped doing those stand-ups, we haven't been to in a very long time. Um, uh, but that would be a very similar thing of just like one man going and do this one thing and and knocking it all out. Um, so hopefully, hopefully these are good um, because the Sennheisers are like six to eight hundred dollars yeah, for a Jesus. pair. Still, um, like it's such old technology, and it's pretty much the same exact product, and they are mm-hmm. still six hundred dollars a piece. Right. I mean, that's that's how high end audio goes. I mean, the, the we've been talking about, um, you know, a new digital mixer, and the one that I'm looking at, the X32 line, is is also a very old model of, 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 of mixers that they make for, for a long time. Um, but it's, it works and they don't need to change it because the only thing that they can change is giving it more thing, giving it more inputs Mm because there's already just an entire bevy of like software stuff that they put into it. And you can't even, you can't put more into that at all. It's just, it's kind of bumped up to, (laughs) we've actually, we've hit peak fidelity on audio unless someone comes up with like, I, I don't. I don't even know. Sixty-four bit audio. For some reason, yeah. someone wants to do sixty-four fucking bit audio. For some reason, huh. <laughs> you can really hear hear the pops mm. in sixty-four bit. Um. So yeah, hopefully, I I feel hopeful about this. We still have other things that we need to replace, like I mentioned. Um. So hopefully, we can also get that at the same time or cool. soon. Well, if I could do a mini segue here, we also bought a couple other things, such as audio speakers um, for Mr. Hughes. We uh, got those ones that we put on the list, and okay. we, the monitors. We got two of them. And what what brand? Uh, what brand were they? Uh, Yamaha HS eights, probably. Okay. Yeah, and like they're they're solid. I mean, they're like I had to, I had to, <laughs> I had to like talk. Brian into them. I'm like, no, 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 Brian, look at the ones that your friend recommended. And he looked at the ones his friend recommended and every single one of them was like a thousand dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. And so this 30, you know, 350 bucks a piece. Yeah. And so he bought two, by the way, that's what we wanted. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he got two of them Jeez. and I he should've... was like, he's like $700 for two speakers. I'm like, but, but they're like one third of the price of what your friend suggested. And wow, he's okay. like, okay, okay. Because, yeah, like you said, there are no fucking, there's no roof for audio. And that kills my brain. Because, like, we could buy the best of the best of the best TV ever. And it'll cost mm-hmm. five, ten grand. And that's the best TV. But audio, it's like, well, what about that $100,000 mono that came out 10 years ago? You want that? Oh, what about that $200,000 amp that came out? Like, there's no fucking limit with audio. Mm. It's just like this wine seller's market. Yeah. Uh, you should have talked to him getting a third one because we could use them in here. <laughs> but uh, so part of, uh, but I, I, I kind of joke, but like with one of the things that we want to do with getting a digital mixer in here is having um, bus outputs. And, and so that there, if there's a speaker over there, that gets its own mix. If there's one here on the desk, it gets its own mix. If there's one for the audience, if there's any audience members watching, that gets its own mix. 
And um, right now, the thing that we have is just this little Bose pill speaker right now. Yeah. And it hooks in via, you know, eighth inch uh, mini jack. Um, yeah, see, now I talked him into those because I'm like, no, 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 just for me, you just got to get a $90 subwoofer and a $100 preamp. And I'm mm-hmm. fine because I don't really care about the quality so long as I got the full range. Okay. Man, I I, uh, I like my, I got, uh, what is it, Cyber Audio? Cyber, it's not Cyber Power because that's computer. Mm. Um audio something like that i just have these like d- decent like desktop speakers and they've got us they've got a little subwoofer on them i've had those for a few years now and yeah. those are pretty good but if you want good monitors like this is kind of as low this as is the like, price gets but, but also like th- this is i it should definitely like probably on the low side for like um professional mixing monitors but this is a professional mixing monitor yeah like hmm. the skeptoid this showed is... us his monitors and they were like twelve hundred dollars Sure, I, I I believe you yeah. that they're expensive. But I'm also I'm saying like this is a this is on the low end of a higher caliber than yeah. I expected you would, you guys would get for uh, you know an editing station. Well, what what was uh, the what was your desire for these, Mister Hughes? Uh, you know, I just want to hear good. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, when just want to thank God when when we move the computer over to here, it's like I'm not going to bring my personal speakers. Sure. Um. And I would like to have an option to not be forced into using my headphones all the time. Um, so it's like, well, if, if we're going to have some kind of speakers, what kind of speakers should I look into? And, uh, and these came highly recommended. So I figured, eh, well, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. And uh, these, I think these are XLR. You're going to have to get an interface for these. Well, they, they come with a, yeah. a millimeter, eight millimeter jack, don't they? Am no, I that's crazy? a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Yeah. That's a TRS. Okay. So you'll have to get uh, a little sound card or something for these. Yeah. No, you'll have to get because these are that's a single XLR and and it doesn't do pass through. Interesting. Okay. Well. Hmm. Huh. All right. All right. Have you guys? So you so you are like, is, do you have a rough idea of when you're going to move in, Brant? Because I know you're still waiting on stuff to arrive here and get ordered. Yeah. Just, just when stuff shows up. I mean, there's also a monitor coming. Okay, cool. Monitor. Uh, what, what, what's what's left that is is needs to be ordered? I guess uh, keyboard. Okay. Mm, ha- have you picked one out? Because I know you were like debating which one to get. Yeah, uh, Mashdrop makes a pretty nice one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the one item we didn't get today. That's 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 one that I'm 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 feeling pretty good about. Okay. Um, outside of that. You know, I, w- I would love to have a, have a mouse, but I can use my personal mouse for a while. That's that's not a super big deal. Yeah, and I think um, like we even have some very basic USB mice from these computers here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Look, man. Look. <laughs> <laughs> look, the Logitech MX Master is such a good mouse. Uh huh. It's such a mm. good now, mouse. Okay, but what if I told you the Logitech unbranded mice that comes with the computer? <laughs> <laughs> I've I've used it right now. I've got yeah. the one that came with the computer plugged into my personal computer, so that way I can interface with that if I need to. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, sure, sure, uh, cool. Well, have you guys? You guys are going to be co, you know, sharing a space. Have you? Have you tried commingling yet? <laughs> All right. So I've met Brant well, a couple okay, of times. I, I have a concern. Okay. I'm, oh, okay. I'm going to put you on blast just a little bit here, John. Oh, um, no. I noticed Uh-oh. somebody brings some uh, fingernail clippers to their desk. And I I feel like that's hmm. that's like just beyond the threshold of like cool. Even if they have a guard, a nail guard on them? I feel like it's like brushing your teeth or flossing at your desk. Which I is have like, a toothbrush at my desk. I don't brush at my desk. I go to the bathroom. Yeah, if you want to go to the bathroom, I'm like whatever. Sure. That's, that's but I, I think the implication is like, well, then that means you got to take your shoes and socks off, pimp. Yeah, Mister Mister well, Exercising do- over here. I'm bringing a gym in here. <laughs> there is a weight vent, or there's a, a a little weight vent in the room. Also, there is <laughs> and weights, and I've been working out every day. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like that's 
But the nail it's, clipping. The nail clipping, I feel like, is, I is can, bad office etiquette. <laughs> okay, I can move that to another trash you can. can. Use, the nice, use the nice bathroom. You're good. Okay. Or even, okay. you know what? If you did it outside, I would never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of land out there. There are many other rooms in here. All right. There are many bathrooms. You fi- use this bathroom if you want, I don't John. That one's in here half the time. I don't know if Bran wants me clipping my nails in inside. I mean, whatever. <laughs> as long as it's not at your desk, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> this is... Oh, my goodness. We... <laughs> I did not realize that, like... Well, a new odd couple is about to happen. <laughs> My Felix? Building. No, no, no. You're Felix. I'm, I'm uh, the other one. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the character took me a week to figure clear. out F U meant Felix Unger. <laughs> um, but outside of that, I think the thing I'm most curious about is um, is like audio stuff because mm-hmm. you know we both got speakers yeah. but we, it, it would be difficult to edit audio both of us at the same time i'm not super worried because i work a lot during the daytime mm. true i do have kind of a weird skewed schedule yeah so maybe you guys will just get into a rhythm of Ships like passing in the night basically yeah <laughs> right yeah because uh, i know like you you john mentioned that you that this is wild of me. I, 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 I'm not trying to have shade or tea or lemonade. Put me on blast. But, put me on blast. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned to me that you like have stuff on in the background while you edit. Yes. And it's the most insane thing to me. Really? I cannot. I couldn't possibly you do don't anything binge? else. Do you while binge while you edit? So I, I have stuff on while I edit. It's actually it, even, even when I'm like it, even when I'm streaming, you know, and then it's mostly just music. Right, um, which is kind of so the the time that I can't have stuff on is when I'm editing audio, right. because I need to hear the audio, and that's what where my focus has to be. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, yeah, put put on some Star Trek or whatever, like, sure, wow, um, and just go through it. You know, I can. Huh. I I don't need I, to. I I the reason I can't do that mm-hmm. is because a I get distracted. Sure. And then B, my mind says, well, I should just finish watching this thing <laughs> and then get back to it. Because I, I honestly can't work with it. It is just it's a just it, it's too distracting for me. Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> totally fine. See, for, for, me, all... for me, there are times when I can and times when I cannot. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. And for me, it's all rewatched stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. sure. It's like my seventh, you know, pass at Scrubs or. You know, the third time I've watched uh, the third season of Mr. Robot or something like it's binging like in the background. I've already seen it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't have stuff on all the time, but I do occasionally dip into that sort of mode. OK. OK. Well, there just, you go. Especially with music. Music just like. Yeah. Gets me into a right huh. e- energy. Like if you catch right me in mindset. the mornings, especially like I got my K Flay blasting with my headphones on, and I'm just going to town at the cutting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. See, it's, like, it's like that ad that Bryce did where he was a hacker. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I can't. For some reason, I just can't. Even music, I don't think I could hmm. do. Um, Interesting. I I guess I could probably try with music, but for mm. me, it's always like. I, it's, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I need to have the focus because otherwise I will like, you know, look, at some, look around. Well, and here's a question. Do you listen to music when you play video games? Mm-hmm. Okay. And to me, it's the same thing. It's especially if I'm See, not I like, don't. like if I've already, I will, I, I do turn down the music a lot of times in games or mm-hmm. like play my own stuff. Um, but it, that seems different than me. Just but like, if I've already gone through and I've trimmed the fat, I'm not listening to exactly what's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm watching the waveforms and I'm watching the cues and I'm like just playing a little game of mm-hmm. how to make it look right, how to make it feel right. I wonder if it's also because I'm I'm usually editing Scamnation stuff, so there's usually already like bar music and a ton of noise mm-hmm. to contend oh, with. Sure. Um, in a lot of cases, like a significant amount of it. Mm-hmm. Or just because we have so many mics and some of them are turned up because people are quiet talkers, whatever. Um, huh. Hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like I haven't I haven't had anything else on while I play games since I used to play World of Warcraft ten years ago. Because that was a mm-hmm. game where it was like, if you're not doing something else, you're playing that game wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Um, 
but I feel like I haven't done that since really? then. See, I think most of the games that I've played, other than the ones on stream, because the ones we've been streaming are like really narrative focused games. Mm-hmm. The types of games that I like to play are ones that I would that I want to like have something on in the background. Sure. Um, that's interesting. I also don't play many games, so I guess I yeah. probably have a bit of a selection bias there. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Uh, so we've got a few other topics here. Brant. Yo. When I got this email and I read it, <laughs> I tried to imagine your reaction, your first reaction <laughs> to reading it, because this has been a thing. And, and I don't know how specific we should get into this because I don't know how verboten it is to talk about. Hmm. Um, it's a thing that I think people know can happen. Right. I think we've said as much um, on this program before. Uh, but I, what, before we even get into the details, of it, what was your reaction to getting this email about this thing that someone would like us to do? Well, first, uh, confusion and then uh, anger. Okay. And then bargaining acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then just bewilderment, I guess, like a long tail of bewilderment. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so, so with ga- without getting into the specifics of why, or even even who, maybe uh, mm. uh, it was uh, it, it was <laughs> advised to us that we should update. Uh, we should go and make an edit to a f- couple of videos. Right. And alongside of that, those people offered a special one time only opportunity to uh, uh, swap out the video files on YouTube in place, keeping all mm-hmm. the engagement and stats and stuff. Uh, anyone who has listened to this show, maybe ever <laughs> knows that this is Brant's number one with a bullet, uh, Request that YouTube open up for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I think there's plenty of evidence out there that people know that this is already possible. It, we, right. There's almost demonstrable evidence that it has happened before. Yeah, so we've seen it with Apple ads that have gone on YouTube. We've seen it with Google ads that have gone on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Where it's I think like, some Blizzard stuff has had that happen. Yeah. Like and big it's, companies. Yeah, really big companies, and it's like, Oh, this weird detail changed in the video from between yesterday and today. And Mm -hmm. it was a very quiet thing that nobody acknowledged, but people found it out because people pay attention to stuff. And it's stuff that, so YouTube does have an editor, like they have an inline Mm -hmm. software editor, but it would be stuff that you would not be able to do in that editor, like adding or changing text or Mm -hmm. what have you. Um, I know I would certainly love that feature because I think I am probably seven for eight in terms of Scam Nation videos having a misspelling uh, in the video despite despite trying to make sure I don't have misspellings. Been there, you know. See, and my vote would be that they actually allow us to make those kind of changes within a certain time frame. It's like the three day oh shit option. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let, it, it, uh, I, I think we probably shouldn't talk any more about the specific scenario here, but I do think hypotheticals and what we would like to see as this option is still very kosher. If that mm. feels yeah, because okay because the actual scenario is it's dumb business. Stuff. Yeah, business um, stuff that we don't really care about. Right. Um, but like yeah, for our own things, needs, we definitely wouldn't have cared about about this beyond that. But I didn't sign an NDA. <laughs> yes, and no, we didn't sign anything. Uh, that a lot of people got this email. Yeah. Um, in KVHD apparently has the ability to swap video files. Very curious. So I wonder about that. Hmm. I want, I wonder because hmm. that would be Marquez. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, he's definitely like obviously a big YouTuber name, but he's not like an Apple or a Google. Hmm. Uh, so how does that go? Is that all like liaison stuff between YouTube and him? You know, I, I wonder, I think, I bet Modern Rogue is big enough. I bet if we made a stink with our YouTube person, we could probably begrudgingly get like one video swapped ever. <laughs> right. You know, I think unless we had like 10 times as many subscribers, I think we could maybe eke out 
one emergency, <laughs> like, oh no, we accidentally showed a dick on this video <laughs> from seven years ago and we need to change it. And nobody saw it yet, but <laughs> you know, something sure. like incredibly like, uh, a very specific can, scenario, I bet we could we could make the case for one, hmm. um, and I'm sure we, I, I I bet they don't like doing it even for the people who they let do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would swap out today's video for the record. Oh, so so we just had an article video about you. Yeah, just you, had an article video, and it's the dumbest thing. Like I watch it, Brian watch it, um, maybe you've watched it. You like, did not send it to me. So. Okay. But we went through the whole video a few times together. We're like, great, all good. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I didn't notice until me and Brian together finished watching it is that every time that their their list comes up, the their rating system comes up, mm -hmm. um, it says rating and theory. And this is this is not about there's no theories in this article. It's all about events. It's all about crimes. Oh, yeah. It says rank and theory instead yeah, of rank the, and crime. Yeah. Okay. And so it's, but I've been using think, the same template. Yeah. So it's not a big deal, but it, it would be something where I'd be like, oh, shit, I'll just change that and then swap it out. Yeah. Also, uh, it looks like you didn't add our latest contributor. I did. I did. They're, they're at the end. I oh. see. Interesting. One. No, no. This is not. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, that's, uh, okay. Yeah, I must have here. clicked on the wrong thing. There are two here. Five crimes that totally okay. deserve to be movies. Then in the doc, the wrong link is oh, copied oh okay, because well, that's what I clicked on. Oh, yeah, but okay. Uh, so, like, I I think that would be very reasonable. I think like mm -hmm. a twenty four hour or forty eight hour like grace period would not be the craziest thing in the world. Uh, actually, John and I we were talking about this over over food the other day, um, and. For me, I had not I had not thought about it in this way, but if Google gets into like letting you change videos, and Google already has like a very squishy take on like people selling their own ads and videos, um, and suddenly people can like change ad inventory in videos and basically cut out you know the YouTube middleman of you know doing stuff through AdSense or through YouTube ads. Um, I think they would be none too happy about that. I mean, like, I, I I don't see how it's like too far divergent from right now. You can just sell ad space on your videos. Uh -huh. um, I guess it would give another path of revenue for somebody to say, "Here, we want to pay you know for this length of time on your video or whatever." And let's swap out um, the top ten with who, the yeah. highest bidder. Um, which I feel like most channels would not even take advantage of because it's a lot of work. Sure. Um, but, but there are machines like, I mean, you know, like if you got a Buzzfeed or something with like mm -hmm. that amount of just raw horsepower to film and, and get stuff and they have their own mechanisms for, for handling their digital outputs, um, I th and I think that's where the problem would be hmm. is having the Buzzfeeds of the world now have their own digital platform with inside YouTube that cuts Google out. Hmm. Um, I, don't, I at least I, I don't think it would be a big thing either, especially for that. Um, but I think someone at Google has thought of that and said, well, that's enough reason to never do it except in special cases. I also think they could do things like Get not only you know limited time, but maybe limited number of replacements. They could say, "Hey, you could replace this video up to two times or something." Hmm. Um, there are tons of things they could do for transparency to allow people to know when it's changed. Like right now, guess guess what? Brian's been changing titles of videos all hmm. across the board, and there's zero transparency to that. Like even he doesn't know when he changed the title for X video because mm -hmm. he's not marking it down or logging it or anything. And YouTube definitely doesn't surface that kind of information. Yeah, there's no history right. of it. Um, there's no logging of changing descriptions or anything. Um, there, there's, there's, we could sell thumbnail space. <laughs> you, you could talk about the thumbnail for uh -huh. anything yeah. at any point in time. I'm sure that's very um, valuable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are just like, 
I feel like the, the pros so far outweighed the cons. And then also like they're, they're, they, you know, a few months back, they, they kind of revamped the, the partner program or whatever, where they're like, Oh, we're going to specifically vet partners and stuff. Yes. It's like, why don't you specifically vet replace video functionality? <laughs> you could do that. And then you could say, Oh, this channel is like in good standing. Um, mm-hmm. and then we can grant you the ability to do that. Um, I, I, I wonder, cause I think there's a, a, there's an easy way for them to do it where no one has to think about it on their side anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I think there's them doing it the right way, which involves building out more tools and building, I mean, how long has it been that they were building this new YouTube studio beta, right. this the new uploader beta, this new uploader beta that has zero Zero new functionality. <laughs> the YouTube Studio that is still not even feature parity with the previous Studio YouTube Studio Classic. Um, so creating a world where now they're tracking, you know, video changes, keeping doubling or tripling up on video space because they are keeping logs of some of that stuff. Um, well, so the- I think it would be very. I think it would be great. I think it would be, and I'm, I, I don't. Uh, I, I'm not even standing that it's it's it's. They shouldn't do it, but there's the, the business, the, the business people that would, that would approve the time that it would take for them to build these tools would, would not do it, especially if all it would do is make goodwill, which YouTube doesn't give a shit about right. and like potentially lose them any amount of money. Yeah. And that's the big problem is that it's not profitable to make this really great feature. One uh, one gripe about functionality. Have either of you noticed uh, when you go to add a link in the end screen, it uh, asks you to accept the terms, and you try and accept, and it still won't let you. Mm, I no. feel like I haven't experienced that. Uh, I haven't had that issue. Yeah, I tried to create the end screen for Modern Rogue and add the Patreon, and it's like that's a link. You got to accept these terms, and I'm like, click, mm-hmm. click, click, mm-hmm. and yeah, I I I wonder why that is. I always just end up being like, you know, import from this other video and then I'm done. Yeah, more or less. So. I'll, I'll change them. Like we have, we have different playlists on Scam Nation for different types of things. So mm-hmm. I'll change that around. Or if we have a guest and, you know, we'll change the channels and stuff around. Yeah. Um, but like I usually add the Patreon link to the end of Modern Rogues. And <sighs> sure. That, yeah, it's, 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 it's so weird, man. Um, should do, uh, I, This is not on our doc, but I'll bring this up. Um, oh my goodness, we are going way later than I thought. Okay, I, I will keep this very quick okay. because I have not, I have, I have listened about a bunch of this stuff, and it's all just like people screaming that the sky is falling. But do you guys have any ideas or takes on the the FTC cop it's fine. stuff? It's gonna be fine. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. It's like. If if you make videos that are specifically targeted at you know kindergarten age children, yeah. then yeah, it's it's gonna it's probably gonna suck because you're probably gonna get ad revenue cut dramatically and children don't need high quality entertainment apparently. You're, you're gonna be oh. you're gonna be brought into this you know kids ecosystem, which probably isn't even gonna be like appropriately surfaced in the kids app or anything, but right because of YouTube, but. For normal people who just make normal videos, I don't think that there's any difference except you go into your channel settings and you say, my videos are not made for kids, and then you're done. Yeah. And, like, the, 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 you know, all, there, there are a lot of different boogeymen in, in this, right? Like, well, $42,000 for every time you get the quiz wrong, which is, like, how much of the YouTube metadata do they already not care about? They're not going to care about this. YouTube's not going to check... Yeah. You know, it's this, it, it, you would have to be flagrantly wrong. You would have to be so flagrant about this that it was, it warrants like federal investigation <laughs> into what you're doing. You know, no, also, one, it's not, it's, it's not, it's how, fine. how much could you be fined for literally any copyright infringement? Millions of dollars. Yeah. Many millions of dollars for way for, you know, a single track or a video or a movie like n- hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars per offense, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, eh. yeah. Um, and I, I get the, so the other thing is like, it's kind of broad. It's the guidelines are not, the guidelines are not even about videos specifically because it is a all of, it's all about all of online more or less. 
Um, but, and so there's like, well, then I don't know. They're really not telling me what about Legos? What about blah, 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 blah. And it's like, like, just use your head. Like you're, you're not going to get in trouble if you use your head and you make a decision and they're like, Hey, no, that's, that's wrong. Like you're mm-hmm. not going to get, it's, it's going to be fine. You know, the, uh, by the way, you know, who's in trouble It's fucking YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's the one at fault here. <laughs> just, just for the record. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's YouTube who had to pay that settlement. Um, and it's YouTube who's doing no, nobody else owns the data. We don't own our data. We don't do data tracking. YouTube does. Hmm. So anyway. And and do not please we have we have someone who I think is very well intentioned in the Discord, who for a couple of days was like you should watch this thirty minute video of some guy talking about the Kappa stuff because I don't want you guys to go. It's like it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I mean, change is scary for a lot of people. I suppose mm-hmm. I just think that they don't realize how little of a change it is. Right, 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 right. So anyway, that's that's Kappa stuff. Uh, last thing here. Uh, we, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, Lockpicking Lawyer, uh, the second round of videos from him uh, is out. Uh, it was a four-day week, a four-video week for that. Yep. Um, uh, how, how was that? It Anybody? Was, it, was, it was fine. Yeah, it, like was, it was uh, three videos for you, right? Three, three for me, two for John. Um, Wait, was it five videos or no? Uh, one of those videos was the whiskey it was bullet thing. One of the oh, bonus uh, Brian and Stewie special episode. Mm. Mm. That's um, a reference. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it was fine. It was uh, all of the videos were were so short that it ended up not being a super big problem. I mean, lock picking lawyer, he kind of knows what he's doing, so. Uh, those videos, you know, it's when I look at it and I go, this video has six minutes of footage that I need to cut down into a video Mm -hmm. as opposed to an hour and a half of footage. I'm like, I could do that in a couple hours maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. It's a very quick turnaround. Yeah. Although speaking of him knowing what he's doing, um, I did like, as I was editing, it didn't even really cross my mind as a thing at all. But the moment I posted the video, everybody noticed that the lockpicking lawyer like she, brushed uh, Jason's hand aside, mm-hmm. and he was a little uh, like like he wasn't mm. a dick or anything. He's a super nice guy, great to work with. But you know, there were some moments where he's like, "No, nope, we got to cut this," and we're like, "God, what do you, what do you mean? We're not we're we're just gonna roll. We can edit. We're fine." And where he was just like used to his own thing, and he wanted to you know forge ahead. Like, no, no, no we'll just cut and we'll move ahead. Huh. But uh, like certain things, like him brushing Jason's hand aside, like I didn't notice that while I was editing. But mm. oh, weird! That's like the biggest comment. Uh, you know, people love <laughs> to invent stuff. How yeah. uh, we? I, I maybe mentioned this before, but like we get a comment or two in the Scam Nation channel, maybe once a uh, you know every month or so of like, oh yeah, they sold the channel to someone else, and you know it's a new whatever. And it's like. That is not, no, that's not true. Like that's object, objectively incorrect. Mm-hmm. Um, n- like, and I'm saying I, it's not even close to correct. Like <laughs> the, the business things about that channel are not even anywhere close to we sold it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause if we sold it, uh, it wouldn't look like that. I think right. it would look like something way worse. <laughs> And, and a lot of people like to project a lot. So mm-hmm. on Modern Rogue, I'll notice every once in a while with like Kent or I saw it recently with Lockpicking Lawyer where they were like, oh, you can tell this guest hates them <laughs> or whatever. And I'm like, dude, they came back to do more videos yeah. with us. Like, why would they do that if they hated us? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's this weird thing of people like watching a video, getting annoyed and then projecting their feelings onto a guest. So that way it kind of like validates their feeling Hmm. and then leaving a comment about that. And it's like, not even close, dude, (laughs) not even close. Um, yeah. And we were featured. We were, yeah. In the, we made our own CTAs at the end of the lockpicking lawyer. They're they're so Mm -hmm. tight. They're so condensed that there wasn't Mm -hmm. like excess material to pull from. So what sorts of things like, Uh, so for mine, I just just plugged a little podcast. I I plugged the, the Patreon and then Mm -hmm. told people to be nice. So yeah, I I just, you know, just told people to support us on Patreon. Oh, look at him and be nice. Look at him. 
That was right after sunrise as I was finishing the edit. <laughs> I actually went back and timed that. I couldn't believe you got that all in 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I wrote mine out and I rehearsed it. Well, that's why it, That's why you had that such a tough time because you wrote it out. <laughs> you know, that, uh, That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> that's right. Very, like, very big dollars. Oh, man. Every time, every time I'm like, okay, Brian and Jason, I'm going to record this little video. It has to be in 20 seconds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They almost never do it. They, they always go over. Because they like to like, I, I think it maybe started early in Modern Rogue where I would never say cut because some of my favorite things are what happens in that awkward, uncomfortable silence at the end when you know that the take is done, but nobody's said stop yet. Right. Uh, and sometimes like some of the best comedy comes out of those bits. So they've been like trained to always make everything go, going and go way ahead. longer than it needs <laughs> yeah. to be. Like there, are, there are a few Modern Rogue crutches. Um, that's one of them. Just like stuff trailing on just with the idea that it will fade out eventually. Um, uh, Brian walking off set uh, to signify that a video is complete. Right. Uh, and then uh, uh, saying, uh, welcome to the modern rogue, when someone has uh, different expectations of what they're going to see. Oh, my God. Cut out <laughs> pretty much every one of all three of those instances <laughs> that I can find. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you'll see in the billboard, like the billboard for Friday's video, definitely you can tell that Brian's about to keep going and say something else. And I'm just like, no, nope, cut it <laughs> off. Go into the next thing. <laughs> Cover it with a graphic early. Uh-huh. And then that's, yeah. Um, those are, those are the three crutches. I think that are in, in you see a lot of that in scam nation too, especially mm-hmm. the walking, off, the walking off thing. Just, uh, that's a, that's a big one. It's very goofy. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, we have uh, just a little bit of time here for off-topic stuff. Brant, it looks like you uh, yeah. you went out of the city. You left the city. You escaped the city. Yeah, so I took a, quote, vacation, unquote, which was um, really just a long weekend that I pretty much worked through the whole weekend. Oh, geez. Uh, so my mom came in on Friday. Uh, she flew in from Delaware, and so I hosted her for Saturday, mm-hmm. um, which I worked through just a little bit. And then uh, Sunday morning, I drove her to Dallas to an airport, uh, and we had to be there at six thirty or seven or so. Sure. So we had to leave here super super early, which meant that Saturday was kind of cut in half. Um, and then I visited my dad for a day and a half mm-hmm. or so, and then drove back Monday night and started the lock picking lawyer stuff. Um, wow. Yeah, a lot of a lot of driving. <laughs> And yeah. you don't, I think of you as someone who doesn't like driving. So I used to hate driving. I used yeah. to really loathe driving, especially back when I had a truck because mm-hmm. it was really tough to park and because it didn't handle very well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I used to get a lot of anxiety from driving. But ever since I got a car, I, like, I, I really appreciate night driving because mm. there's nobody on the road and usually I'm pretty awake at night. So for me, like, I really enjoy that experience. Mm. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of driving. I'll do it if I have to, but yeah, it's not my favorite. Okay. Well, uh, are, are you going to take any time off for for Christmas Christmas break holiday break? That sounds great. <laughs> um, I I basically anytime I get a vacation, it's like okay, go see my dad hmm. because he's the only family I can reasonably get to in any amount of time. Uh, uh, um, and it's like I get to visit him twice a year, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't get to take t- too much time off because, you know, the modern rogue videos are so demanding. And then, you know, it's it's a lot. Yeah. Well, I hope you can find some time over the holidays to see your loved ones. Mm. Uh, I know, John, you're you're sticking around town. I'm for, definitely for sticking around town. I'm finally going to get my my single Christmas day off with some frozen California chicken pizza. <laughs> uh, so uh, do, you, do you have anything, John? How you been? What's up with uh, you? I've been good. Uh, loved Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot has been yeah. very good. I, uh, la- this past, did you, did you see this? Oh, yeah. I, episode? I watched it. I watched I think it. It's, I think it might be my favorite episode of, this, uh, of the show, maybe. Hmm. Or it's up there. Like that's why I bought this sweater and Brian bought a Mr. Robot jacket. We're going to film a bunch of random CTAs. Oh, uh, okay. That's fun. <laughs> So we did a we did a Mr. Robot intro for Scam School um, a few years back. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I should, I, I should, I, I, I will not be able to find it within the scope of this program. But uh, I remember, so we shut, so it's Brian like walking up to like a glass door and it's, you know, framed up like a Mr. Robot shot. And <laughs> he says something and then the, 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 the scams, it's scam school in the fit Mr. Robot font. Um, and then. I think, Is that the, also the episode that you did the ad in? Cause I, I think I remember you did a Mr. Robot. I ad. did a Mr. Robot type ad, but it wasn't in that episode. I think, okay. I think it was in a different episode. Um, maybe this was an outtake or maybe this was in it, but at some point, so he does the take and he gets it just right. And we're waiting cause we need time for the graphic and you, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then a woman walks out of the building and he's, he just holds it. And he's <laughs> doing such a good job of holding it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mr. Robot, very good this season. Huh? Fantastic. Like, uh, and some of the reveals were just, some of the best reveals I've ever seen on television. Cause mm-hmm. you know, the whole time you guys were hyping me up about it. I'm like, Oh, like what is his sister? Not real. Are they really not blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh no, a reveal built in character that I should have seen coming. Holy shit. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of really good stuff this season. So it was good. Uh, um, yeah. One more thing about the holiday season. I, me and Corey are making a trip to home Depot and I'm building us some fucking flats. We are going to have a modern rogue set. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Start, start thinking about colors, gentlemen. Mm. Uh, I guess yellow. Uh, huh? Yellow and black. Ew. Okay. <laughs> Those are kind of the modern row colors. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, fair. Fair. You're you're not wrong. Um, what's up with me? I've been doing a lot of streaming lately on on the Twitch TV slash Night Attack channel. Mm-hmm. Um, we just wrapped up. Uh, oh, what game did we just wrap up? We spent a lot of time playing it. And now I don't remember what... It, oh, Death Stranding. We, we beat mm. Death Stranding. We, I might not have even started it. I think I was mentioning starting it last episode of this program. Um, but we knocked it out in four weeks. Um, weird game. Um, I, have, I, have many, I have many complicated thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, this past weekend, uh, we started... Uh, we played through Super Liminal, which mm-hmm. is way... Which was quick, which I kind of expected. Uh, it was like th- two hours, maybe. Okay. Um, but it's very good. Uh, it's a, it's it's one of those things where you know there you play a, a, a like a very hyped indie game and it's very short, but something about it is like really charming. Like like Donut County is a very fun premise and the writing is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Guildlings on on iOS on the Apple Arcade is really really well written and a very interesting idea. But uh, it's there. These games are like two hours long. Florence on iOS, a great love story and a very cool idea, ridiculously short. Um, and so, super liminal is like that. But it's also stupidly impressive. Hmm. It was it was something where like I was playing it and felt shocked a little bit by just how much clever stuff that they were doing by mixing level design, uh, visual design and like technical um, bits to using, using the technology in a really strong way. Hmm. Um, there, there's one segment where uh, you are like going around and hitting snooze on, on all of these alarm clocks. And there's one that you hit up and it's at, it's on this table and you, and behind the table, there are like rows of chairs behind it and you walk up to it and you hit it. Um, and there's a elevator that you're going to right behind the table and so you move to the side and you realize once you hit the, the snooze button, it like uh, project, projection printed whatever the angle was of you hitting um, that clock. And so it was like a flat uh, space. It turned it into like a So you would turn and it would warp as if it was printed like a perspective sort of um, image. Mm-hmm. Um, like lots of really clever stuff like this that. This was all Mac or? Uh, it's on PC. Yeah. Oh. I, um uh, I, I think it's very cool. Um, a lot of perspective stuff. Yeah. It's all about perspective. It, you know what? It's all about perspective. Wow. Um, and then, and then, uh, Disco Elysium was the last one I'll mention. So mm-hmm. after super liminal, which only took two hours, I started doing uh Disco Elysium and I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it on the stream because, um, if you don't know it, it's a like very text heavy RPG like there's not even like a fighting system really. It's like making dialogue choices and um, there's, there's voiceover. There's some voiceover in it when some major characters say some big lines of dialogue. Um, But 
most of the time it's either stage direction or you know expo- you know expo- exposition of the environment um, sometimes it's like the uh, inner voices inside your character's head who don't have voices because there are like 30 of them um, and so that was like four hours of reading on stream mm. and I've done those before and they always like just wipe me out doing really yeah. long lots of reading on on the stream so I don't know that I want to keep I want to keep playing the game but I don't want to keep reading it and I don't and if I don't read it it's not a great experience for people on who are watching it mm-hmm. so I'm in a weird place with that I feel like I what was that game called there will be gods or something Oh, uh, uh, gods will be watching. Gods will be watching. Yeah, yeah, that was the like emergency situation management the, type game. The, the, there was a lot of reading with that when I streamed it. I feel like because I remember kind of having, huh. having that experience, or, or at the very least, it's a it's a long game because it's very punishing. Yeah, um, and so I, I I'm and sure I, there is dialogue with I, text dialogue. I also th- yeah, I also think I, I was not as forward thinking as I could have been because I like did voices for certain people and uh, sometimes some people that's not, <laughs> sometimes that's not always sustainable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. God, I just remember like one of the, maybe the, this had to, had to have been the first year I was out here cause I was up at the other apartment, but I would just wake up and do like these 12 hour streams and like play visual novels and just read these visual novels for like 12 hours straight and then just like collapse because mm-hmm. there's no, you know, writing. Um, I definitely played some porn games on that channel, huh? I, I think it must have been my personal channel because I don't think I was doing the steering stuff yet. Yeah, um, I remember. Yeah, uh-huh. I think it was not explicit, but it was definitely like you mm. knew what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one super last uh, quick thing for sure. me: uh, I, I watched uh, the latest uh, BoJack. Yes, um, the, fir- the first the half of first the half last of the last season. season. Yeah, uh, very good. Bojack's always yeah. a very quick watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, what did you think? I loved it. I, I, I've I've always thought that Bojack did a really great job of broaching topics in a way that most shows do not. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I think this last season is strong and interesting. Um, it, the only thing I didn't like about this half of a season mm-hmm. is the last episode in it. I think it's okay. very cool. You see it, uh, you see a whole day in the life from a different character. Mm-hmm. But the thing that happens at the very end feels like it's it's good drama that she finds out about that thing. Mm-hmm. But I have no idea how that information makes it from one part of the country to this entire other group of people in that part of the country. I don't know the follow. I don't know the through line yet of what's what's and maybe that character was like at the scene or is Mm -hmm. there earlier but when did the this half come out Mm. Uh, about a month ago ago? i gotta catch up on that yeah because i i I do love bojack yeah did you finish undone ever no i need to uh i did just start watching uh living with yourself that paul rudd and paul yeah i just finished that yesterday i very good. It's a very good show. It's one of those things where everyone was telling me to watch it, and I was like, I'll get to it. But I started watching it today while I was working on the Night Attack game, and it, it goes through. It's very fun. It reminds me a lot of... It's in the middle ground, I think, between um, like Maniac, the, the Netflix Maniac uh, psychological show, mm-hmm. and, mm, and like Ant-Man. Like a, a straight up comedy, like mainstream action-y comedy okay, thing. Sure. Like it's, it's right in the middle of the, of that. And they do, they do such an interesting thing with the structure and, and like format. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of like back and forth, mm-hmm. especially the first two episodes where it's like the day as this one of him. And then the second episode is just the day as the other guy. Mm-hmm. And so there's like a timeline of an episode and then the next episode has an overlapping timeline, but mm-hmm. still progresses you forward. Yeah. And, and the thing that I really like about it is that there are like some, sometimes when, when shows do this, especially like time travel shows, it'll feel kind of cheap where it's like, Oh, something weird happened. And I, I'm not going to know what that means until the end of the movie when, Oh, they go back in time and the weird thing happens. Mm-hmm. Um, in this show, they're like, they're, moments that happen and then characters react and you go, Oh, that reaction makes sense. But it's not until you see an episode later that you see all of the context for that reaction that you like understand some of the subtle nuances in the performance that you go, Oh, I, 
I understood the reaction before, but now it feels complete and whole in a way that I didn't realize it wasn't before. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So lot, lots of good stuff there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to wrap this up because we have to get ready for a night attack here in just a minute. Uh, but I do want to say, uh, let's get our plugs in. Uh, uh, Brant, if you can just take David, just, David had to leave. So if you could give uh, David's plugs. Uh, these are real. Ah, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, John, uh, anything you want to plug? Mm, uh, skeptically bound. I don't know. Okay, we'll have go to, to my Twitter yeah. sometime. We got that linked in the show notes. Uh, Brant, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gatwag. That's G A T O W A G. Mm. Also on Instagram, you can find me on the Modern Rogue accounts. That's Modern Rogue Show mm. on both of them. I think both Instagram and Twitter, and uh, you can find me on the Modern Rogue uh, Discord. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brycas, B-R-Y-C-A-S. I do a lot of streaming here on twitch.tv slash night attack. Uh, I also man the Scam Nation show accounts on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the night attack show account. Uh, I need to talk to Tom because I want to get the cord killers account also. Because mm. um, I think he just does it when he sees anything about it. But it's like it's got an old icon and it's, no one right. uses it. Um, so check me out there. Uh, this show is called The Bizarre Briefing. You can get it at bizarrebriefing.com. That's where you can find past episodes, many years of, uh, of content. Wow. Many, yeah. many years of content on this, on this award-winning, internationally recognized business podcast. Hmm. Uh, you can find past episodes, show notes, links, time codes, all that stuff there. Or you can watch us, youtube.com slash scam stuff. We do this show. Unless we've replaced the video. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry. Uh, we uh, we do this show live around the end, around when there's a new month or so. Like it's December third right now uh, at Twitch.tv slash Nine Attack. So uh, follow us there. Get, hit the bell for the notifications. Yeah. Uh, and until next month, we'll see you then. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>